Hello everyone, welcome to another Exchange 2019 video. My name is Ed and in this video we're going to show you how to create a SEND connector. Now in Exchange 2019, 2016, 2013 you have a mail flow tab so you log into the Exchange Admin Center, click mail flow and you'll see that pretty much everything related to mail flow is here. Your policies, your domains which I spoke about earlier, your receive connectors, and you can drill down and then your send connector. Now, as you can see, and in the beginning, if you watch the installation video, there was a big error to say that there's no send connector, which is rightfully so because it's a brand new installation. So to create a send connector, you would click the plus sign and we would give it a name, which we can call it my connector. You can give it any name that you want. We're going to be sending uh, internet mail <coughs> next. Now, this is the part where you are able to uh, either use your MX records or a smart host. So, if, like in, ex in the previous ex one of the previous examples that I did, where we were doing a Telnet test to Mimecast, you would then select the option to route through a smart host, click the plus button, and enter the FQDN in here and click save and it will show up here, but in this example we're going to just use MX records and you can change this later on if you want to. Click next. Now comes the address space. Um, if you are using sender-based routing, you'll obviously specify your domains um, and let me show you, you have to click the plus button. I'm going to use a star because I'm sending everything, but if you want to use like sender-based routing or anything like that, which is a essentially like another transport agent that's installed on the server, then you would have the FQD in here, and, and obviously anything destined for that domain will route through this connector only on based on how you def how you define it, etc. So we're going to use star. Once I click save, you can see there. Let me click next now. It might be a case where you have specific servers that you want to allow to send mail to the internet or receive mail versus other servers that you don't want to. So you can click the plus button. You need at least one server. So in this example, I'm going to do both just to show you. It shows you the server, shows you that it sits in the default first site. So this Active Directory is a vanilla Active Directory. It hasn't been modified. The site links are default. The site names haven't changed, etc. And then we can click finish. So straight off the bat, you'll see that it's enabled. It's got a send li limit of 35 megs. And at the moment, you can see that logging is off. If I wanted to turn logging on, I can enable it. And if I wanted to disable this connector, I could simply dis click the disable button and I can turn it off. Now, you can do the same by editing it, <coughs> where first of all, you can change the logging level, you can change the sending level, and <coughs> we spoke about earlier where you can change the network status. So, again, if you want to route through a smart host, you click here, you add, and then if they do specify authentication, you would then enter the username and password. Um, if it's secured with IPsec externally, you would basically follow the, the ISP's uh, setup guide. And then basically, if you look at the scoping, we're doing this for everything. We're not limiting it to one domain. And here are my two servers and lastly here's your FQDN so you could provide put any name that you want in here to respond it might be <coughs> instead of like a server name you could call it SMTP 47 uh, or whatever click save and pretty much done and that's it for send connectors thank you very much for watching